Hello and welcome. My name is J. Michael Bennett. I am an orthopedic sports medicine surgeon. Uh, I specialize in uh, injuries of the shoulders, elbows, and knees. Today we're going to be focusing on the elbow. The elbow is a multi-axial joint that has uh, multiple planes of motion. When you bend your elbow, this is called flexion and extension, and you can see the model here. This is flexion and this is an extension. We have supination, which is the palm up, and then we have pronation, which is palm down. As you can see, primary movements of the elbow are flexion, extension, supination, and pronation. There are a number of ligaments and tendons around the elbow, and these ligaments and tendons can commonly be injured, particularly with any kind of repetitive motion. First and foremost, we have a common injury and ailment called golfer's elbow, which is, actually occurs in the medial aspect of the elbow, which is the inner side of the elbow. This controls the flexion of the wrist. There's a number of muscles and tendon units that in, in, insert right here on this bone, which is called the medial epicondyle. With repetitive motion, particular repetitive flexion, and you can actually get this from other sports aside from golfing, will irritate this group of tendons, or this main tendon here at this insertion site. What happens at that point, you get these micro tears. That tendon may actually split in small fibers and actually may develop some small tears that can get easily inflamed and irritated and fill in with degenerative tissue. That tissue can become easily irritated and become very painful, and it becomes painful when you try to elicit that activity, particularly when you're swinging a golf club, or when you're lifting a weight. This is easily treatable about 95% of the time with doing things like proper exercising, modification activities, rest, anti-inflammatories, bracing, and occasionally an injection. The appropriate bracing is called a counterforce brace. It actually goes around the forearm and unloads this tendon. Using that for a period of a couple of weeks will actually unload the tendon and allow it enough time to heal. Now occasionally about 5% of the time these uh, injuries may not get better. And if that's the case, your physician or surgeon needs to get an MRI to actually look at this tendon to see if it is degenerative or not, or how badly torn it is. And occasionally you can have to, and occasionally surgery is indicated, where we actually go in there and debride and repair that tendon. Now on the other side of the elbow, the lateral side is over here, and the outside of the elbow, and this is where the common extensors insert, and that allows you to lift your wrist up. And this is where patients will commonly get what's called lateral epicondylitis, also known as tennis elbow. It was originally described by tennis players because of the type of grips that they would use when holding a racket, and it would overload this area. Same exact thing happens with the lateral side as the medial side. The tendon becomes overloaded, these micro tears occur, you get degeneration within that tendon, and this can lead to chronic pain. Once again, you can treat this with bracing, exercise, modification activities, occasionally anti-inflammatories and injection, and if it does not respond, then we tend to obtain an MRI, and very suddenly we need to operate. With fixing the lateral side, we can do the surgery in one of two ways. We can do it arthroscopically with two poke holes on either side of the elbow. We put a camera in there and actually debride this area and repair it, or we can make a small incision about a centimeter and a half or two centimeters big over the site and repair it with an anchor. Same thing with the medial side. So those are the two common injuries of the elbow and the lateral and medial aspect of the elbow. Medial epicondylitis and lateral epicondylitis, also known as golfer's elbow and tennis elbow. Moving on to the central portion of the elbow, supination, which means rotating your hand almost like you're carrying a bowl of soup, is, uh, is one of the main motions that we use when we reach for change, when we reach out to twist a doorknob, and this is actually controlled, the majority of supination or strength of supination is controlled by your biceps insertion. This is the biceps muscle here, and it inserts right at the radial tuberosity, which is right here. So if my hand is pointed downward, this is the position my bones are in. This insertion right here, this stump, is the biceps tendon. When you flex your arm and then you pull on this tendon here, it supinates the arm. So this is where it inserts on this bone here. Occasionally you can have a tear of this biceps tendon or you can get a tendonitis in this area. When you have a tear, it's usually an audible pop or significant pain with a deformity. 
you will notice that your arm looks a little abnormal, swollen, and your biceps is shortened. If that is the case, then more than likely you have a biceps rupture. And you can have a rupture distally at the lower part, which is where this inserts, which controls your supination, or you can have it up top proximally, where you have the, the, the biceps inserts up top and you actually have a defect going distally and you'll have a shortened biceps in the opposite direction. The proximal biceps ruptures usually do not get addressed unless uh, the patient has an issue with the cosmesis. The distal biceps ruptures are usually addressed in patients that are very active or are laborers and depend a lot on their supination strength and on their flexion strength. And usually that is fixed by a small incision over the, uh, the uh, forearm region and we go in there and we find the tendon and we tack it back down to the bone with some small anchors and that will usually give you back your strength allowing you to supinate again.